love everything Viking. That is to say, I love Norse culture, the mythology, the history, but there are very few games with a Viking setting. Somewhere amongst the rabble, Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice was announced. But I either forgot about it or I just missed it completely. So when this launched, I felt like I'd had a Christmas wish granted out of the blue in August. Hellblade throws us into the troubled mind of Senua, a Celtic warrior or Pict who is battling some demons following the 9th century Viking invasion of Dalriata, or what we now know as Scotland. Senua is making the treacherous journey into Helheim, the Norse realm of the underworld, to retrieve the soul of her dead lover, Dillian. When the game begins, you're thrown straight into a disorienting narrative, a confusing mix of voices and an occasional breaking of the fourth wall. Oh, she heard us. It's clear that we're in for a unique experience. The game is incredibly cinematic. There's no HUD, no tutorial or on-screen prompts to guide you through the controls. Just Senua, plagued by voices that argue and contradict themselves. While we're all familiar with the insanity and often wildly manic behavior of video game villains, these displays of mental instability are rarely explored with much nuance. Conversely, developer Ninja Theory did extensive research on the subject, reaching out to mental health professionals, as well as those who experience auditory verbal hallucinations themselves. Naturally, this is a game where sound design is a big part of the experience, and it's best played with headphones. Surround sound if you have them. The voices really do sound as if they've been conjured up in your own mind, berating you for making certain choices or goading you to do things, constantly expressing fear and doubt. Which means that when you do come up against these hellish enemies, it can be quite a vexing experience. Sometimes the voices will let you know when a foe is behind you. Other times they'll just tell you to run when you can't. Go. And then there's the rot. <laughs> One of the few pieces of information the game actually gives you is that the rot that takes hold of Senua as she journeys into hell will eventually kill her, and as a player, all of your progress will be lost. Permadeath is a pretty hardcore mechanic to build into a game, and it quickly became a talking point with players early on. But then came reports that this threat, that your progress could potentially be lost, maybe just that, a threat. A device used to instill the same amount of fear in you as Senua experiences on her journey. The same paranoia, the same incredibly high stakes. But like so many things in Senua's mind, not a reality. It's a divisive move, but one that I think was actually quite clever. So you set your focus on battling your way through each haunting scenario, trying your best to work with the voices, perhaps learning to embrace them as more of a gift than a burden. Hellblade is by no means a perfect game. Much of the combat can feel relentless and repetitive, but it looks magnificent. The mythology binds it together beautifully and Melina Jurgen's portrayal of Senua is raw and gripping. Ninja Theory had the capacity to capture a lot of this in real time, which is incredible. And if you want to nerd out over this as much as I have, you can watch all of the extensive developer diaries that are on Ninja Theory's YouTube channel. What I love about Hellblade is it's another great example of using video games as a medium to explore something as unique and complex as psychosis without sacrificing on action and adventure. As an interactive experience, it makes the journey all the more powerful and gives us at least some small look inside the mind of someone who experiences things a little bit differently and is a seriously awesome demon-killing warrior too.